Uh, so good to be with you. And uh, we're uh, glad to uh, yeah, be, be with you in the, in, the, in the area. And we're visiting a lot of our friends. And uh, I tell you, I want to, your pastor was one of our best young people. <laughs> and uh, we enjoyed having him and going out on the, uh, the uh, explosion or uh, on the Coral Ridge uh, program. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had a lot of young people. Yes. You know, that uh, were in on that uh, Sunday afternoons. And we even had a church from uh, uh, Royal Oak or somewhere up there that would send their young people down and uh, go out with our young people. Uh, and so praise the Lord for, uh, for that. Well, Nancy? Yeah. Uh, the good word, the big word that we have heard uh, from uh, the Congo within the last month is the fact that uh, we had the evangelism. And uh, I see Jim here, and uh, Jim, good to see you. And he w he went out on evangelism in the Congo with uh, with the team, but uh, uh, the guy, the uh, the team was there uh, this time. And um, Eddie Cooper. Uh, yeah, the place called Ikubi, Ikubi, and the. I, Word was out that many people in the village of Ikubi, quite a few people, were being killed um, with knives, especially uh, because of uh, property uh, uh, disagreements. Yeah, and so uh, the evangelism team uh, went in there and. They heard the they heard the gospel, and it's amazing that in three three, three days, three days is that right, Nancy? Yeah. In three days, there were four thousand people saved. Wow! Four thousand people saved. <laughs> and that's at Ikubi. And then they went to the village of uh, uh, Tebi Tebi, Tebi Tebi, which was close by, and there were 3,000 there that, were, uh, that accepted the Lord. Amen. That means that uh, all together, during those four days, there were 7,000 people Amen. accepted Amen. Christ to the Lord. Wow, what a thrill that was to to hear that. And uh, uh, Nancy, you can have something you, you can yeah. share with the people? Yeah, um, I thought it was wonderful to walk in today and hear y'all pray. Um, that's a rare occurrence, to walk into a church and hear so many, and there, was, there wasn't much silence between each prayer. It was just a wonderful thing. Amen. Thank you for being a praying church. Yes. And uh, we, we, we really do appreciate it. And we appreciate, we know when we think of Ecorse Community Bible Church, we have your prayers. Every day. It's, it's, yeah. it's just heartwarming. It's so encouraging. Um, I wanted to leave with you a chapter of a favorite song of mine. I also want to say that our, our women's literature school is in its second year. We have 15 mm -hmm. women who come from local villages who don't know how to read or write, mm -hmm. or write their name, or pronounce words, or they don't know phonetics. Many of them don't even know the alphabet. Somehow they've slipped through the cracks as they went through school and their fathers have been unwilling for them to repeat a grade. So they're just pushed on to the next grade. And uh, many times they don't attend high school. 
they have responsibilities at home because their parents have large families. So we have 15 in their second year. By next year, they will have completed three years of training and they have they will have done a cursory examination of nine books of the Bible because the Bible is their reading text. And um, then we have a new, stu a new group of Bible, uh, Bible Institute students. We have 15 of them as well. This year we have 10 men and five women. And they're doing great. They, they will have completed their first year in July. Uh, our radio station is going. The great news is there is a generator on its way Amen. to Congo. Amen. Let's give the hand to the Lord. Uh, and it's getting there much quicker than we thought. It should arrive around the 6th of July in Kinshasa. We have wonderful missionary friends who are going to see that it gets onto a, a rented truck and taken to our missionary friend's compound, Dan Green's, the, it will be kept safely there until he gets back from the United States. And he will take it personally up to our mission station and install the generator uh, sometime before Christmas. So please keep that in your prayers because the present generator we have is on its last leg. It's just running on prayers and uh, that that's true. Uh, spitting out a lot of diesel, though, so we're wasting a lot of fuel because it's just not able to perform as well. Yeah, John. And how many people does that radio station reach out to? It's a potential of eight million. Whoa. But when you live in the bush yeah. with no internet and excuses for roads, it's really hard to know how many we reach. It could be more. Sometimes you have, yeah, John. And I'm sorry. That's okay. But yours is the main station. Uh, it's the only one. We have no competition <laughs> for hundreds of miles. Yes. So you get into Kinshasa, and then, of course, we can't compete with that. But even in the early dawn mornings, our radio station, we've told, can be heard in Kinshasa before the other one comes on. So, Amen. yeah, uh, that is, so after, after evangelism was done at Ikubi, all these testimonies were shared on Radio Glory. It was a wonderful experience for the villagers to hear. And the chief declared that village Ikubi for Jesus. And he said, yeah. the only one who can give peace is Jesus Christ. Amen. So the murderings, as far as we know, have stopped. Amen. Um, Amen. People are very desperate in Congo. They're extremely poor. Amen. And so they had these terrible land disputes in the forest. Uh, and the only way they won was by killing someone. So uh, praise the Lord for the gospel, for his blood. That, that's the only thing that can uh, forgive us of our sins and, and give power so that these people don't have to be enslaved and Thank sin. you, Lord Jesus. Um, so I was trying to think. We have evangelism. We have the school. We have the women's school. We have the radio station. We have a little clinic that just takes care of emergency needs. And you've been a part of that now for 44 years. The ministry is 84 years this December. By God's grace, it's, it's kept going all that time. And uh, I want to share with you this chapter that came to mind today as we were preparing to come. Um, put a marker in here and I didn't. Here we go. Sorry. Don't worry, I do it's, that all the time. <laughs> Psalm 34, it's one of my favorites. I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of his glories and grace. I will boast of all his kindness to me. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt his name. For I cried to him and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Others too were radiant at what he had done for them. Theirs was no downcast look of rejection. 
This poor man cried to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. For the angel of the Lord guards and rescues all who reverence him. Oh, put to the test and see how kind he is. You ever heard that boy, that bird, that rendition? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Yes. See for yourself the way his mercy showered down on all who trust in him. If you belong to the Lord, reverence him. For everyone who does this has everything he needs. That's quite a promise. Yes. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those of us who reverence the Lord will never lack any good thing. Amen. Some commentaries think that the strong young lions refers to the unsaved. Hmm. Sons and daughters, come and listen and let me teach you the importance of trusting and fearing the Lord. Do you want a long, good life? Then watch your tongue. Yes. Keep your lips from lying. Turn from all known sin and spend your time in doing good. Try to live in peace with everyone. Work hard at it. For the eyes of the Lord are intently watching all who live good lives. And he gives attention when they cry to God. But the Lord has made up his mind to wipe out even the memory of evil men from the earth. Yes, the Lord hears the good man when he calls to him for help and saves him out of all his troubles. Of course, the good man, there's no one good except Jesus Christ. So that's just those who are in him. The Lord is close to those whose hearts are breaking. He rescues those who are humbly sorry for their sins. My version at home says, he rescues those who are crushed. He's close to those who are crushed about their sins. The good man does not escape all troubles. He has them too, but the Lord helps him in each and every one. God even protects him from accidents. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked. Heavy penalties are meted out to those who hate the good. But as for those who serve the Lord, he will redeem them. Everyone who takes refuge in him will be freely pardoned. I just wanted to share that with you today. Thank you so much for all you do, for all your prayers. Yes. Uh, who wrote that? Uh, it's David's song. David. Actually, he wrote this when he was appearing before a king uh, uh, that he was very afraid of. Abimelech. Yes, and so he appeared to be frothing at the mouth. Mm -hmm. He appeared to be insane because he wanted to escape yeah, that wrath. Yeah, he was acting crazy, so they let him loose. They yes, exactly. <laughs> So thank you again for uh, your love and support. You take care of us. We had a need this weekend, and you, you came to our help. And Pastor John, we're so appreciative of that. Praise the Lord. Then open them to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Uh, it's going to be abbreviated study, but it will be uh, important. And that's Mark chapter 13, verses 28 through 37, please. Mark chapter 13, verses 28 through 27. Now I'd like to say this at the beginning of this lesson. We want everyone to consider your position in Christ. Are you in Christ? I didn't ask, are you saved? I said, are you in Christ? A lot of people think they're saved. But they're not in Christ. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, you're probably familiar with that, is that certain ones that will gather before Christ at the judgment and they'll say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do miracles? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? And Christ is going to say, depart from me into everlasting darkness. Uh, I never knew you. Never knew you. I forget who it was that said that's the saddest verse in the Bible. Probably is. I used to think that Revelation 20.15 was the saddest book in the Bible. I mean, the saddest verse in the Bible. What is Revelation uh, 20 and verse 15? You should know it. Yes, you do. Whosoever's name is not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Go up to verse uh, 11, and it, where the beast and the false prophet are, and where Satan is placed. And there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. Okay, that is coming, friends. It may be coming sooner than you think. And uh, it doesn't matter what age you are, because... Christ has promised to come back again, and that's in God's Word. And so, you need to consider, are you in Christ? 
Do you know him personally? All right, not everyone who thinks that they're saved are truly saved. And so I want you to pay attention. The rapture of the church is only, only, only for the blood-bought born-again believers that have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't know about Christ. Haven't made a mere intellectual assent to, to uh, elements of the gospel. But Christ has come into your heart. There's got to be some evidence. There's got to be the fruits of that decision. By the fruit ye shall know them. You know, I don't know how often we've talked, I don't know if I was talking to Wayne about this, uh, that uh, if you have a, a seed in your plant, it's an orange seed, and the tree comes up if you've got that kind of patience, it's going to produce apples. What? Oranges. It's going to produce oranges. If you are spiritually born again, you have spiritual DNA from God the Father. He breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. He died, Adam died because of sin, but Christ came, the second Adam, the last Adam, and he paid for the price of Adam's sin. We are Adam. We are the race of Adam. We're not the race of uh, uh, dogs or canine or cats. Or We are mankind. And so, listen, if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the old man has died in Adam. And the new man is there, Christ. Amen. I'll give you a verse, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified in Christ, the I in Adam. We are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, all of us. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says we die at the cross when we embrace Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live the I in Christ. That's the new I. Have you experienced that? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus? What does God say through John the Apostle in 1 John 5 and verse 11? This is the record that I give unto you. Eternal life. And this life is in my Son. Is in the Son. The Son of God. That's life. Eternal life. Qualitative. It's His life. He gives it to us. Without it, we can't get into heaven. And he says, they that have the Son, verse 12, have life. They that have not the Son of God have not life. So it's not, have you made a decision sometime in your life to trust Christ your Lord and Savior? That's not the question today. Do you have Christ? You have to make a decision to receive Christ in your heart to be saved. But a lot of people, it's just a profession. Is there fruit of that decision? Okay, and uh, we're talking about, you know, in some liberal churches, you know, you go through a series of uh, catechisms and confirmations. I did before I came to Warrendale. And, uh, but the, the point is, is that there was a point in my life where I said, no, I want to have the assurance of salvation. And I needed Jesus Christ personally. And that's, uh, that's what you need that if, you, if you're not sure. So the rapture of the church is only for born-again believers. Are you listening? Born from above. There's a change inside. Spiritual DNA. There's new life. Okay? It's knowing Christ. It's walking in the Spirit. It's having the Holy Spirit living inside of your hearts. You know, um, what? No, you're not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Paul said to the Corinthians, why do you say that? Because some of them didn't know. Do you? Do you know? It's not a feeling, by the way. It's not. You can't feel the Holy Spirit. But He changes your heart. Now, you may get emotional about that. I do. I love Him for it. I talk to the Holy Spirit every day. I talk to the Father every day, Lord Jesus every day. I, I talk to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing repentance to my heart so that I could trust Christ as my Lord and Savior. Fill me, Holy Spirit. It's not that I, I don't have all of the Holy Spirit. I have all of the Holy Spirit, but He doesn't have all of me. And I need to confess my sins. And boy, when I confess my sins, I'm forgiven at that moment for that sin. And then I'm in the Spirit. I'm walking in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I need that. We need that. Pastor Armstrong used to call that um, spiritual breathing. To be able to have that spiritual awareness. Christ says that He's coming back only for those that are watching and waiting for Him. 
Did you hear that? He's only coming back for those that are watching and waiting for him. It's called the blessed. He's called the blessed hope. He'd come at any moment. He's only coming back for those who are watching and waiting for him. Are you watching? Are you waiting? Remember what Paul the Apostle said when he was ready to go home to be with the Lord? He says, I've run the race, I fought the fight. Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness and not for me only. But for all those that are watching, all those that are waiting for him. Boy, in the day and the age in which we live right now, right? The world is upside down. And the Bible said in the book of Isaiah and a dozen other places, that's what it's going to be in the last days. People are fearful of hearts. We used to think that back in the 70s that uh, uh, they were predicting he's going to come, the Lord's going to come by 1975. Then, then Van Impey said by 2012. Boy, a little premature, wasn't it? But you know what? The time today is ripe. And that's why we're looking at this lesson. I want you to think about this. Are you ready? Do you know him? The whole book of 1 John was written that you might know that you have eternal life and that you might believe on the name of the Son of God. That's why 1 John was written, the first, all five of those chapters. And that's 1 John 5.13 that says that. You want to know you have eternal life? Plug in each chapter. There are 15 evidences. 15 evidences that you can plug in to say, oh yes, I have eternal life. Not just, well, I prayed a prayer in 1972, and uh, since then or whatever, I've gone to church a few times. I got baptized. Is that what you're going to tell the Lord when you stand before Him? Or do you have to tell Him anything because He already knows you and you already know Him at the moment that you trusted Christ and it's been a journey and it's been exciting and there's nothing more exciting. There's nothing more fulfilling. You cannot be fulfilled without that relationship with Jesus Christ here on earth. You think that uh, a partner will fulfill you? You think that your children will fulfill you? You think that your parents fulfill you? You find out very quickly over time that uh, they're limited in what they can do, and even in the best of relationships. Only God can fill that hole that he's uh, left in our hearts through Jesus Christ alone. And uh, he's coming again for those that are what He's coming in the clouds. It's going to be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. It's going to be that fast. It won't, you won't have time to uh, repent after that takes place. And you'll see everybody rise. But will you rise? Amen. That's important. He's only coming back for those that are spiritually awake. We, see, we hear this often. The church is sleeping and much of the church is sleeping. The liberal side of the church. Are you a part of the liberal side of the church? Where you're just going through the routine... And uh, you ought to have, like we said before, is a, a, a little time clock in the back to get your card. When you come to church, you punch it. And you say, there we are, Lord. And you punch it when you leave. And boy, you're done with your Christianity. If, if you're able to come to church, if, if you care to come to church. But if the church has a light on Ephesians chapter, not Ephesians, the church at Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2. His light, if you have the light on, in that church, there aren't many, as many churches that have the light on anymore. The light of Christ, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me should not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Do you have the light on? Boy, have you ever been, uh, I remember as a kid, going into a closet. I don't know if I was hiding from somebody or maybe I was punished in my room. Go to your room, son. And in the closet, boy, there was no light and it was hard to see. How nice to open the door to have a flashlight in there. Boy, that was exciting to be in a tent and you're dark and as a kid, but you put that light on, you can see it all. Christ is the light of life. And he gives it to us and he tells us then to take that light. And are you taking that light, Matthew 5, 16? And it says, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Are you serving the Lord? Are you being faithful to God? Because if you are saved, that's your desire. You can't help but not do that except you'd be convicted because you know you're out of His will. He's coming for those that are spiritually awake. Consider this as well. If Christ were to come back before this service ends, would you be left behind? And I think in these days, that's vital and it's also important for us to consider that. 
I'm going up, I thank God, because it's grace by what Jesus Christ did at the cross. It's not just uh, coming to church. Coming to church, we said a long time ago that that cannot save us. Or being baptized. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to read this and close in Matthew uh, 13, 28 through 37. Watch what it says, Matthew 13, at least 28. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and she put it forth her leaves, you know that summer is near. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, I remember looking up this year, every year, and looking at the trees. I'm across from a park and watching them begin to bud. It wasn't summertime yet. It was still cold outside, uh, somewhat cold. But they began to bud, and I saw it, and I said, summer's coming. That's common sense. Jesus used that as an example. But he says there's a vital, important principle behind it. Now listen, verse 29. So you in like manner, when you shall see these things coming to pass. And that's the same in Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 through 9. He says there's certain evidence that you're going to see before I come. These are only the beginning of sorrows. Because the church, the true church, doesn't go through the tribulation period. He comes and he takes us away because it's the time of what? Jacob's trouble. It is the time of Daniel's 70th week. It's for the Jews and it's for the earth dwellers. Philippians, uh, I say Philippians, because the church at uh, uh, the, the Philippian church. In Revelation 3 and verse 10, it says, because you kept the word of my patience. And it's the church of the open door. You're involved in the, in the work that I've called you for because the Holy Spirit's inside of you. Because you kept the word of my patience, I will keep you, ek, out of, not dia, through, ek, out of the time of trouble that will try the whole earth. And it says the earth dwellers. Many times in the book of Revelation, speaking about the earth dwellers, either you have the earth earthy, 1 Corinthians 15, or you're of the Lord spiritual. And that's the evidence. And so uh, he's going to keep the true church, those who know him as Lord and Savior, those who are really born again. Boy, you're convicted when you sin, when you sin. And so you confess it and you want to get clean because the, most, the second most important thing in our life as a believer is this. First is, are you saved? Do you know him? And then second, are you in fellowship with him? Boy, to sin, you're out of fellowship, and you now are miserable if you're saved. You've got a Heavenly Father that loves you, and He has adopted you and He into His family. Why did He do that? He loves us, so loved us. And so it says here, verse 29, I got one more verse, and it says, So ye in like manner, when you see these things come to pass, know that it is near. Where? Even at the doors. Even at the doors. You know, the people who... In my house, it's crazy. And maybe it's the same at your house. I think it, Wayne sees these. It's, here comes a UPS, and here comes uh, the mail truck, and here comes, you know, these uh, Prime, and here comes uh, these other uh, Amazon or whatever. And they're all coming in to my neighbors, and they're dropping off packages. And, you know, I know they're so excited when they come to the door. He's even at the door. Look at The item that I ordered is there. And people are living for the things of this world. How sad. Okay, not the things that they need, but the things that just make them happy. But how long? For a short time. And but here the Bible says he's even at the door. And verse thirty. This is the closing verse. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be done. Listen, and I close. The floor might be getting ready to fall out beneath us. I felt when my dad died, the foundation was gone. I mean, I was just a teenager. I mean, what are we going to do? My dad's gone. How's my mom going to do it? But I was a teenager. I was ready to go to Bible college. And, uh, but my dad knew the Lord, and there was a great joy there. I remember after he passed away. Uh, the very, that was at 1 o'clock at night, and then I was there driving a bus at Warndale Sunday morning. And in the Sunday school class. Praising God, and yet there was a, a, a void in my heart, but praising God because God was there to see me through. And uh, the floor may be getting ready to fall out beneath us. Listen, 
when the rapture happens, only the true blood-bought born-again believer is, is going to be in his presence. Are you ready? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? And so this is a seed that is planted in your heart. And uh, you have to make that decision. You notice in your bulletin it says that um, uh, at the top it says, if you don't know Christ, come and speak to a, a, a counselor here. Come and talk to me. I'm happy to talk to you. Because we don't know how long that we have before Christ is ready to come. And after the rapture takes place, it will be too late. Seven years of tribulation such as the world has never known. And so... Uh, how important is it to make sure of your salvation to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege we've had here today to be in this uh, place where the light is on. The light is on. And it's the light of Christ. And so Holy Spirit, so speak to hearts so that others that may not know you as Lord and Savior, that they too, Holy Spirit, bring conviction they too might be convicted to repent, to turn from their sin and embrace Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And maybe they'll come up and uh, uh, desire to talk with me or even Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Missionary Jim or Nancy or his wife or Pastor Baloo, Pastor Jim, Donna, others here to say, would you talk to me about salvation? I need the Lord. And that they also might pray to you, O Lord, that you might bring conviction into their hearts so they can know you as Lord and Savior. We thank you for those of us that have trusted you as Savior, that you've given us eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.